The three river systems shown in this video demonstrate the open alluvial landform. Alluvial corridors, both open and forested, are associated with wide, low gradient river valleys filled with mineral material over the underlying bedrock. From the air, one notices characteristic features such as meander bends, bars, levees, oxbow ponds, and multiple abandoned channels. These features occur over a wide area, either side of the flowing river channel, often hundreds of feet wide and up to a mile wide here in the Oswegatchie River Corridor. These changes are dynamic, and all of these features, including the active river channel, change over time. In fact, our rivers have had almost 13,000 years to rework the sediments of these floodplains and create the features we see today. The changes are most often incremental, but at times dramatic or catastrophic events can cause large changes in a short time. The entire valley bottom is subject to seasonal inundation when snowmelt and spring storms swell the river causing it to overflow its banks. The area that is flooded is often called the floodplain. The floodplain is a difficult and unstable place for plants to live, and only those well adapted to prolonged inundation, ice damage, and dry summer soils can survive and thrive. Here the open alluvial section of the Oswegatchie River ends and a bedrock section begins, leading to the rapids above Wanakina on Cranberry Lake. The systems viewed here are open because they have low growing herbaceous or woody vegetation instead of trees that would form a forest. Trees are prevented from growing because of the length of time that the valley bottom is flooded and the unstable nature of the soil substrate. One has to keep in mind that the floodplain examples we have shown in this video are not homogenous, and often there are deep organic soil-based peatlands scattered throughout these wide valley bottoms. From the air, the most distinctive feature of these peatlands is the absence of cutoff channels, old meanders, and oxbow ponds interspersed among the wetlands and vegetation. Plants that grow in these open alluvial corridors can survive and thrive under prolonged flooding. These include woody shrubs like willows, speckled alder, wild raisin, black chokeberry, and dogwoods. There are also common plants, including grasses, particularly calamagrostis, sedges, and forbs like blue flag iris, wild clematis, joe pieweed, and cardinal flower. The underlying sediments in these open alluvial corridors are typically alluvial, that is gravel, sand, silt, and clay deposited and sorted by moving water. The alluvial materials originally came from meltwater off of glacial ice but are continuously redeposited by the river forming the features we see. Bars of sand and gravel and cut banks on the outside curve of meanders show the underlying mineral soil material in these systems. The river cuts down through the alluvium, and as it does so, it wanders laterally across the valley bottom or floodplain. The constant cutting and meandering leads to the creation and abandonment of river channels. The active river channel migrates over a wide lateral range, as wide as the valley itself, because it is unconfined until it reaches bedrock boundaries at the valley edge. 
channels the river abandons can hold standing water or can be filled in with sediment. Wetlands of varying types can occur in the abandoned channels, including deep water and emergent marshes. Oxbow ponds are a floodplain feature. These are typically curved and now isolated ponds in the floodplain that were once part of the river channel. Plants like pondweeds, water arum, and spatterdock grow in these ponds. Other features, such as bars and levees, are depositional features. Where these depositions occur and their extent is controlled by water velocity. Moving water carries sediment, and as the velocity slows, the sediments drop out and are deposited. This process has been continuous here for 13,000 years. <laughs>